when I was in school, other people were thinking about how to get into the best college. What was the best program for them? I was thinking about how I could make my first million. 24-year-old Canadian poker pro Matthew Marafiotti is one of the most controversial young poker players in the game. He's got fans, entertained by his jet-setting extravagance and outspoken persona, but he's got at least as many detractors, the ones who see his antics as immature, egotistical, or worse. From the Twitter explosion following his breakup with poker pro Lauren Kling to more recent allegations on Poker Forum 2 Plus 2, Marafiotti has become a lightning rod in the poker community. Adding to his visibility, Marafiotti has earned a featured spot on this year's World Series of Poker television broadcast on ESPN. He was also singled out as one to watch by the World Poker Tour. But we wanted to get an inside look at Marafiotti's life, and in May of this year, we flew to Toronto and went to his house to shoot an episode of our new video series, Easy Game. What we got is a glance at one side of the man known online as ADZ124. When I made my first million, it was obviously a weird feeling. Uh, I, my goal my first year out of high school was to make double my teacher's salary, which I thought was totally unrealistic, something like 100 grand. And I just thought, that's not realistic at all. Obviously, I'm going to be in school. And I had like, heard about a few kids that had graduated who were making 100,000 their first couple years out of college and thinking, wow, those kids must be like whizzes or something. I don't think poker is an easy game at all, but I've also, in ways, conquered it where I'm on a complete free roll in life from poker. Basically, I went to Turning Stone Syracuse and won my first live tournament for 200,000, and then I became one of the biggest winners on, on Poker Stars that year at 2550 you no know, limit, and I made millions of dollars playing cash games, and and now I, I've been traveling the live tournament circuit more recently with Black Friday happening. I was in school with friends, and we developed this curiosity for poker, which developed into all putting in $20 for home games, which we could easily, you know, sacrifice, whatever. And uh, basically from there it went to uh, someone telling me that online poker existed, which led to me depositing for the first time, asking my dad for 50 bucks just to mess around. And then it turned into a, a total addiction where right from the get-go I was uh, playing around the clock and very addicted. I went on to steal people's credit cards to play and lose most of my money playing poker, which obviously wasn't a lot at the time. Like at, at the time, a lot would be a couple thousand dollars to me. Literally, it's just such a, a huge change from that and having the computers firewalled so you can't even type the word poker in to handing them over seven figures before you even turn 20 years old and just being like, look, I told you so. And it, of course, like, you know, from their perspective, I understand as good parents, like they wouldn't want their son to get into gambling. Like it's, it's a tough lifestyle and I'm one of the top 1% or 001% of all poker players. So it's kind of hard for them to have known that I was going to be this good at it. I mean, this started as quarter penny ante stuff as in high school, as, as most of the kids were doing at the time. Uh, we never imagined it had the potential to go where it was, both in terms of the joy and, and some of the challenges of defeat, because uh, there's a lot of that as well. Uh, it was certainly very, very incredible in terms of massive amounts of uh, funds and, and transactions that were really happening. And we, we knew little to nothing about this. Uh, and uh, it was quite surprising, quite amazing. I took $18 one week after getting the crap knocked out of me at a bar, I guess, which maybe for me was an inspirational moment and taught me a lesson. And at that point, I, you know, had played a lot of poker and I had taken $500 or $1,000 and ran it into $15,000, but I had never cashed out or reaped the rewards from playing. So I, here I was, this broke college kid playing on a 14-inch monitor in my dorm room and the fire alarms would go off and I would stay inside because I'd be in tournaments. And basically, by the end of the year, I took 800 bucks and turned it into 200,000 because that $18 to 48,000 run I went on earlier in the year after getting the crap knocked out of me just led to me going up to the highest limits and gambling until I was broke again. Before I was even 21, I actually came here to play private games, and Jamie Gold invited me and another player to this game and I remember just coming here and having 100k swings and thinking wow these private games really exist with there's playboy playmates giving massages and there's catered food 
with chefs and the best sushi and cut steakhouse delivering and you know it was unimaginable and uh, it's crazy like you know private games going on in 20 million dollar houses with NBA stars like Paul Pierce or whoever you name it. I recognized and I discussed this with my wife just Matthew just had a natural skill for this uh, and uh, we know that if you don't kind of apply your skill in a way that has got passion with it and dedication uh, the skill could be untapped. So uh, I realized very quickly that, wow, this is not about some passing fancy, some luck at one game, one tournament. It, w it, it definitely appeared that Matthew was good at this. What we did was basically say to Matthew, if that's the case, then this is something that you got to take serious in the context of the business opportunity, the professional development, things that we would as adults kind of bring to the table. It's funny, like he was very, very by the book. And growing up, I was never like that. So it was just funny, like, because I would frustrate him because I was not by the book. But with poker, like, he, you know, he's written me out a rule book to follow when I'm on tilt. And, it, you know, it reminds me of all the things, you know, to do when I'm losing. Or, you know, he's kept all my money. Uh, and the, he's the one who said, you know, cash out couple thousand a day, this is what I have for you in the bank. And that's how it originally started. Uh, looking back at that first year, uh, that's really what set the foundation for some of the honest and innocent principles, first and foremost with uh, uh, me saying to Matthew, and to this day, Matthew, at the end of the day, this is always going to be your money. Uh, and if it's your money, where I'm, what I'm going to do is help you appreciate uh, some of the business context around how your money will help you. Uh, achieve some of the things that hopefully you want to achieve, whatever they may be, but also help you understand that just like anything else, you need to set goals, you need to try and achieve them, uh, you, uh, whether they're economic, whether they're uh, competitive. This is just one example of, you know, having, you know, supportive parents who really look out for me, which obviously helps when my head isn't right. Uh, my father always helps me refocus and one time I was on a downswing and before he gave me my next uh, transfer, my big transfer or whatever to play with, uh, he wrote me a book, it said business rules and the first rule is never play when you, have, you haven't you have slept and the second is never play uh, when internet connection isn't reliable, uh, third is never play on a computer where you're not comfortable. Uh, Four is never chase when you're having a bad day or bad luck. Five, never play when you have people or things around you that, that are distractions. Six, never continue playing when you are losing a uh, high percentage of the games you should be winning in that you're not. So Always stop at a stop loss amount. Always quit when you have won any amount for the day. I don't know if I agree with that one, but He's always on the more conservative side of things. Last but not least, always follow the rules and always call for support. <laughs> so, just right there, that, that alone shows just the type of people there. And that's just one small thing of like, you know, between like every Sunday they'll bring meals over here when I'm playing and they'll be totally understanding of the fact that tournaments are going on and that I have to be involved in them. And they bring food and they, they do whatever they can to help. Making that million I remember my friends coming back from that first year of college that that I had, you know, not been a part of. So like I was with them for the first year, so it was their second year of college they had come back and I was driving like $300,000 Mercedes and you know, it's just weird because these kids are like still in school and it's like I'm now going to five, six hundred dollar dinners every night and you know, regular at all the nicest restaurants. Poker isn't a very glamorous thing, and not everything in poker is about glamour. It's more about <laughs> winning money and meeting the right people because, you know, there's a lot of shady characters in poker who aren't from good families, and my parents both work in healthcare, so what I'm doing is totally different to them, but I remember, you know, I still to this day give my dad all my money. He's my manager. I look back to when I was younger, if, if someone told me that 
I could have hundreds of thousands of dollars in jewelry and artwork and clothes and a multi-million dollar house and a, you know, six-figure car and all this stuff. And if someone told me that I, w at the end of the day, wouldn't be like ecstatic and so happy, I wouldn't believe them. But at the end of the day, like it's not like I'm, I'm I feel fulfilled. Those extra privileges in life are, are really nice. And then I think from there, it just goes to like how you choose to lead your life. Like what kind of person you choose to be, what kind of friend you choose to be, what kind of son and brother you choose to be. I just feel very underrated and haven't really had the right uh, run good at the end of the tournament. So hopefully, you know, within the next year or two, people can realize that I'm one of the best live tournament players in the world. And, Hopefully they realize it through some like really big scores and consistent cashing. I am thankful, and not only am I thankful that I've gotten into poker, but I'm thankful that uh, online poker exists and that I got into it when I did. You know, how long it can, can he sustain this? How long will, will he be able to do it? Uh, so, so to date, I mean, we're, we're talking now almost five years later. Uh, so far, we've been on, on kind of that path.